everybody. It's Kevin from Hats and Guitars. Um, I'm at uh, JJ Hat Center, which is uh, New York City's oldest hat shop. We uh, opened our doors in 1911. I believe back then we had a different name. It was called Young's Hatters back then. But uh, I've been there for 26 years. Uh, I'm working there 25 years in the shop, and the last year I've been on hiatus, basically just making videos uh, from home, instructional videos, and um, answering customer emails, customer comments, and things like that. Today I want to talk about some things, um, some viewer requests, actually. I want to start getting to some of those. We've gotten um, you know, a few people asking, can you do a video on this? Can you do a video on that? So I'm going to start uh, addressing those things now. Um, okay, one of the ones I got very recently was uh, a question about a boater. Now, the only problem is the boater is like one of the only hats I don't have here at my house. Um, I'm working on this stuff now. I'm actually working on getting a steamer. I'm going to try to get a nice uh, jiffy steamer, which is the ones, if you look at my very first videos, for instance, if you go to, uh, you search my videos, go to, uh, you know, uh, Kevin Hats and Guitars, most popular. My most popular video is like 124,000 views. It's basically just me and a Jiffy steamer shaping, shaping hats. That's it. Um, it's an old video. It was done in uh, our small shop that we had in the East Village. So done in uh, our small shop that we had in the East Village. It's like right by Tompkins Square Park, you know, like a really punky, cool, funky area. And I basically ran the shop by myself. And I had cool, like, it, one wall was just chalkboard, so I made a big mural. You know, it was like this funky pork pie and swirly colors and said pork pie hatters NYC. And it was really cool. Uh, it glowed in the dark. It was like a black light wall too. And um, the place didn't have lots and lots of stuff like JJ Hat Center. It wasn't like a supermarket or like the Home Depot of like uh, you know hats. But it was really cool. What we had was really good. We had vintage hats. We had uh, vintage Borsellino. We had you know Borsellino. What I would do is I would go to our main shop. Uh, there's a fire engine coming by. Hey, it's an you know. A flat. It's a little flat. Doppler effect. about the boater now. Okay, the boater is one of the most elegant summer hats there are. 
it's one of the dressiest. So let's say you're doing like um, I don't know, a summer wedding or some kind of summer formal-ish affair. You're doing like a formal thing in the summer. You know, what can you wear? Because, uh, you know, a top hat, a, a Hamburg, a Derby, Bowler, all those things, are, they're just too hot, right? You know, they're fur felt, like sticking a rabbit on your head, you know, a fur coat. So you don't want to break out your felt in the summer. It's also just inappropriate. It looks wrong. It looks wintry. Um, a boater is one of the dressiest ways you can go. And it's kind of in fashion now, you know, I see guys wearing them with like tank tops, you know, like hip-hop DJ dudes and stuff. We have this one customer, uh, DJ, ah, I forgot what his name is. He DJs at like Knicks games, he's real huge. Uh, I forgot what his name is. But anyway, his trademark is the boater. And um, comes in all the time and gets boaters and gets the three stripes of man's, you know, change. Like if it's a Knicks game, we'll do blue and orange and white stripes. And he gets them to match his outfit. So, what the heck is his name again? I forgot. DJ. It's just the guy's name. It's like a regular guy's name, you know? Like DJ Gabriel or DJ whatever dude's name is. And, um, he was like a quiet fella, short, dark hair, you know? And, um,. He buys lots of these, but he wears them casually, and it looks cool. It's just cool. Traditionally, it's a dressy hat. It's a very dressy hat. You wear it, you know, strolling through the park, you know, on a Sunday afternoon. You want to look gentlemanly. That's what you wear with a bow tie and a nice collared shirt, you know, and you look awesome. But, you know, there are all sorts of boaters. The classic boater is the Italian boater. It's very, very thick. I mean, it's super thick. It's like as thick as like, I don't know, a chocolate chip cookie or something. Think of like a Chips Ahoy. That's about how thick, I don't know, for those of you who don't do Chips Ahoy, maybe an Oreo or something. Uh, yeah, an Oreo or a little bit less or something. It's a super thick, thick straw. When you look at it, it almost looks like that corn cob pipe stuff. You guys have seen what corn cob pipe looks like? It looks like that. It's like a whole bunch of straw that's like compressed, like really tight into like a fiber, like particle board or fiber board. Almost like the way they make corrugated cardboard. It looks like that, but straw. And it's really, really thick. It's um, way heavier than a regular straw hat, like a Panama or some other kind of straw that you got. Um, heavier than a Milan, Mylan, hemp, but um, what comes with that is also durability. Most likely you're not going to kill your boater, you, you might have it for life. It's, there are some people who you know, will wear one out if they, they wear it like every day of the summer. You know, It's possible, but it's, it's not common. Generally one boater will last you forever. What's good about them is if the brim ever does get out of shape, it's flat. So you can flatten it yourself easily. All you gotta do is soften it up with a little steam and then just press down against the hard tabletop. You know, put your weight on the brim. Just flatten it against the hard tabletop, that's it. Soften it up with some steam. You know, if you're doing that, keep it away from the flame. It's better to use a steamer, but if not, get the kettle, frying pan or something. You steam it up, you just get the whole uh, brim softened, you know, for I don't know how many minutes, just so you're getting a little bit of flex. Be careful not to burn yourself, the steam is very hot. And then what you do is you put it down on the tabletop and you just press. Um, you might be better off using a bandana so you're not pressing your hands right onto the hat. And that's it. You could even put a bandana on the bottom like a, a piece of cloth. But between your hands and the hat would be more, you know, that'd be more important. So if you're steaming the hat, you don't want it to be soft and like sticky because there's a finish on it, like a gloss finish, and that melts, so it'll be a little sticky. So you want to just basically push down, maybe not totally sticky, more like a little tacky, sort of. You know. So uh, yeah, you could always flatten your brim. You could bring it into uh, JJ Hat Center in New York. They'll steam it and straighten it free for life. Um, any hat you bring us. We'll reshape the brim and straighten it out for you, uh, free of charge. Um, assuming we can do it, you know, there are some things that are just super duper hard to do. But uh, we'll try, you know, or we'll tell you that it's not doable. You know. But most of the time, that's a pretty simple thing. And it doesn't have to be our hat. We'll steam any hat you walk in with. You know. 
you come in with the 40 of grandpa's hats, you want us to steam them up, dust them, clean them, give it a little shake, straighten the brim, it's free. Um, you might have to wait till a couple of paying customers are, you know, so everybody's free, you know. What happens is, sometimes these guys make tips for steaming hats, so the boss doesn't want people taking the steaming people first and ignoring customers, so got to take hat sales first, and if you're there just to get a hat steamed, you just wait till somebody's free. And I'll be right with you, sir. You wait, and somebody will steam your hat. You know, it's not a big deal. But yeah, it's something for free in New York. And can you mail it in? You can mail it in, but what you do is you call first. You make sure that we can do it. You know, it has to be a, uh, basically a felt hat or a straw, but not all straws, and not really wool felt. It has to be fur felt. And um, yeah, we can do it. It's not a big deal. Um, generally, it's free, you know, unless they feel it has to go into the workshop and be blocked on the molds and stuff. We put it on a hat mold on a hat block, and then it can be kind of costly. But you can block just the brim or just the crown. You don't have to do both, so it's a little cheaper that way. All right, now, um, the boater will basically last forever. As it gets older, the Italian boater um, gets a suntan. It starts getting more and more golden. So if you look online for um, straw boaters that are vintage, you're going to see they're really dark. They get like more golden, 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 more dark, 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 like super antique looking. Um, all you got to do is just wear it in the sun and wear it a lot. You know, it might take you a couple of years, but it'll start, you know, or leave it on your uh, windowsill where it's sunny, you know, rotate it and stuff every once in a while, and um, it'll darken up. But um, there are ways to modify these things and make them look really cool and vintagey too. Um, one way, yeah, obviously, is leaving it in the sun, like on your windowsill, give it a little rotation every, you know, day or so whenever you can remember to, and um, it'll start to tan and get that golden color. Um, another way is to change the bands. They come with a big red and blue band, like a blue and red striped band like that. Um, what we can do is change that to something like, you know, like a black, gray, gray and burgundy, or, you know, some kind of vintage striped bands that looks really, you know, like old and vintage, but not red and blue, something a little more toned down and your hat will look really authentic and cool. Believe me, something like that. I mean, even solid black looks great, but if you get a vintage striped band, um, you know, think of like a black background with like maybe a little charcoal or silver pinstripes and then a thick silver one down the middle with a little bit of a burgundy accent or something like that, like a very black and white kind of a striped vintage thing. Anything like that, you know, any of the old vintage striped ribbon will look great on there as long as you do the same you know with they'll make the same bow and everything exactly the same bow like is on a boater um, and it'll look really cool that's a great way to just get the ultimate summer hat um, there's a guy at JJ's that has one it's just everybody's jealous of it it's like the best hat best band you know and it's starting to get baked in and a little bit like a good color patina to it you know so um, let's talk about the boater sweatbands. Now the boater is hard. There's no flex. There's a little bit of flex in the brim if you really like, but not really. It's hard, like a pencil or something. You know, like a pencil has a little flex, but you don't want to flex it, right? All right. Um, there's no flex, so the inside is just like it's almost like you're wearing a wood hat. So what happens when your head is not the same shape as the boater? It's gonna hurt, right? Here's the deal. The boater has something called a floating sweatband inside of it. What it is, is that your head wears the sweatbands, okay? But it doesn't wear the hat. So there's a regular sweatband, and then that's connected to like a really thin layer of net, like mesh. There's a little like fishing net kind of around the sweatband, and then the other side of the net is attached to the hat. So basically the band inside swivels and moves because it's on a little net. It's not sewn like directly onto the straw. It's kind of like moving in a little basketball net. So the idea is you wear the sweatbands, but the hat itself is a little away from you. You know, it might touch you at some points, but um, 
It's not like a regular hat that bends and flexes and takes the shape of your head eventually. Because they don't. Uh, a little. When it gets super old and moist and stuff like I hate that word, moist. Moist. Anyway, um, it starts to get like um, a little broken. But essentially, no. They don't really stretch. So, you know, if you have a particular shaped head that's kind of problematic, it can be a little odd. Like if you're a really big, big guy, it's like a really tall head, you know, let's say you're just a huge guy. And instead of your head being like this high, like Kevin's head, it's like about that high. Well, the boulder only has this much crown, so there's no depth, and the top of it won't flex and get, you know, like, like this hat will flex and get sort of like this. Like if I need more depth, it'll, it'll push up, you know? until you get the right amount of depth you want. But in a hat that's made out of like wood, okay, you hit the top and that's it. And what happens is the hat sits up here and doesn't look right. So you can't wear a boulder. You know, there's some people that they just can't wear it. Um, at least not the authentic Italian boulder, the real thick ones like I'm talking about with the floating sweatband. There are softer boulders you can wear. Um, Yes, the, I mean, the floating sweatband works, and they do make boulders, Italian classic boulders, come all the way to size 8, a 64 centimeters, which is a triple X. And I've seen some of the biggest guys wear it. Um, but, like I said, you might not get the most efficient feel, there might be, you know, some issues in comfort there. Most people are willing to sacrifice that if they really want the boulder. Other ways to go... I'm not talking about huge sizes like triple X and stuff. I'm talking about more like shape. Um, there are other types of boulders. There's a Panama boulder where they use the exact same hat as Panama straw, but instead of having a snap brim like a flange, flange brim, it's flat, just dead flat. Okay, and then there's a boulder crown, a little flat pork pie, flat top crown. You can make a boulder out of Panama too. We sell them. They actually run a little bit tight. So like if you're seven and a quarter, you know, the seven and three eighths would fit you or whatever. Then we, they come small, medium, large, that one. We get them, um, they're hand woven in Ecuador and they're put together right here in New York by Capus Headwear. Very, very nice Panama boaters. They're slightly less conservative and starchy looking. They're a little younger looking. It's a little bit thinner. You know, it's not as thick straw, that real thick biscuit stuff. It's thinner, it's Panama. So it can look a little bit more laid back. You could wear it with like your tank top and your shorts and, and you know, still look dressy in it too. You could wear it with your bow tie and your suit and your, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, those suits, seersucker suit and everything. Bow tie, suspenders and go for the whole dandy thing. But it's a lighter kind of a look, a more youthful, lighter. It's a Panama boater, so let's say it's definitely something dressy, super dressy, elegant but it's slightly less conservative and starchy. It's a little lower crown, it's softer, and it doesn't have that thick look on the side of the, uh, of the flat brim, that thickness. So something about it has a different vibe to it. Um, Panama boaters are more flexible and they're gonna fit, you know, maybe a little better. But again, a boater has a shallow crown and you know, it's not for everybody. Some of the, the bigger, you know, really fat guys or the really, really tall guys, might have a problem with it. Um, maybe not, though. You know, um, I have seen a few pretty big dudes. You know, we sell them in size eight. So, Panama boaters go up to a double extra large, though, and they run a little small. So instead of being like a seven three quarters, I'm going to say they fit up to a seven five eighths. So essentially, if you're like an XL, you can wear it. In a Panama boater, you have to go up one size. If you're a medium. Uh, 718, you go up to a large, um, etc. etc. If you're an XL, you go up to a double X. The classic boater, no, those run true to size. What we call the Italian boater or the classic boater. Those are the ones that come from Italy. They usually have a lining inside that says Venice or Florence, one or the other. Uh, I believe they're made by Tessi, T E S I, who is just about the best Italian straw hat maker there is. They're the ones who manufacture the straw hats for Borsellino pretty much always have. Um, they really make good stuff. They're just the best, elegant, authentic, you know, super old, old companies, so their stuff is, you know, legit, authentic. Um, 
the classic bowler is the one to get. You know, if you're a little younger or you know you're a little bit more open-minded, I think the Panama bowler is going to be way more comfortable, lighter. Um, the classic bowler is a little heavy, you know, but um, you know it does the job. It keeps the, the sun off of you and. Uh, it also lasts forever. It's going to be way more durable and longer. Uh, you'll get more longevity than a Panama boater. Um, classic boaters, you have to wear them every single day, kind of, to, to wear it out. And even then, it's tough. Um, but um, you can get sweatbands changed. Um, it's tough on a classic boater. On a Panama boater, it's a regular sweatband. On a classic boater it's a floating sweatband. So I don't know if we can change the sweatband on that. But what I would suggest doing is putting the uh, Cap Benu uh, sweatbands, the uh, disposable sweatbands in there. Um, when the hat starts getting old and it's a little worn in, just you know, use a half of one. You could cut it in half so it doesn't tighten your hat that much. And um, you know it'll give you more longevity when the hat starts getting a little older. Okay, well, that's it about boaters. Um, boaters are definitely a good investment because one boater is going to just last and last, you know, for life, and you could probably hand it down to your kids and your grandchildren. They never really die, um, and they're just so cool, you know. If you're very, very sensitive to heat and having something a little heavier on your head, maybe, you know, the Panama border is better for you. But, um, you know, give it a shot. Try it out. Uh Thank mm -hmm. you.